welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie here at Gen Con with Chris from Funko Game. Hi, Chris. Hello. How's it going here? It's going pretty good. I mean, it's been a busy con for us. Uh, this is Funko Games' first Gen Con as Funko Games. I think Funko has been here a few years ago. They were selling pops, but uh, the games category is new for us, and uh, our studio is super excited to be here. You guys are making quite a splash, just like being a well-known brand, getting into the board game kind of business, and it's it's pretty exciting. I think a lot of people are excited. Definitely a lot of people have showed up for your demos and to purchase the first game. Yeah, I mean, our, our, our game design studio, where I come from, um, is Force Resilient Creative slash Prospero Hall, and we made a ton of stuff. We, we've done Disney Villainous with Ravensburger, Horrified, Jaws, all those games with Ravensburger. Um, we have a, a huge pedigree, but partnering with Funko, and eventually, you know, they acquired us earlier this year to kind of create their game studio, uh, it was really special, and so uh, we're really excited to kind of unveil what we've been working on, because now we get to make the games and publish them as well, so it's really exciting. Awesome. So tell us a little bit. You have Funko vs. Strategy Game here. Could yeah. you tell us a little bit about the game and what's all involved? Absolutely. So Funko vs. Strategy Game is basically a, a miniatures game. Uh, there are six uh, boxes, six SKUs that are coming out uh, with the initial launch uh, across four different licenses. So we have a Harry Potter four pack, a Harry Potter two pack. We have a DC Comics four pack, a DC Comics two pack, and then we have a Rick and Morty and a Golden Girls two pack. Uh, and so it's one game system. All the games are uh, are using the same exact rule set, and everything has different special powers. Um, but everything you can kind of take it, take it home, play how you want. If you want to mix and match, that's okay too. Oh, awesome. So you could play the different characters in a different game. Yeah, so w what we wanted to do is we wanted to create one system that anyone could kind of have the freedom to, to play. It's like, it's a sandbox. So, um, you know, once you get the games home, you can you can mix and match and do whatever you want. And we, we wanted to make sure that everything was kind of balanced and, and worked for the people that do want to play that way. And so these Funko characters, they're a little smaller than the standard ones, right? Could you tell us a little bit about the design of these? Yeah, so we tried to come up with a design that was kind of proprietary for the game. So uh, the Funko Pop figures that we're using in these games are, are smaller. They're between like the regular Funkos and the, the mini Funkos. Um, but, and the other cool thing about these Funkos is that they all have an item or a hand that can hold an item. And in our game, you, like for example, Harry Potter was just holding the Felix Felicis potion. But if we want to give the Felix Felicis potion to Hermione, we can do that. And then the card would go to her character and she would get all the special abilities. Uh, so in this game, you might see uh, Voldemort with the dagger. You might see Voldemort with Felix Felicis. Or maybe he grabs someone's broomstick and starts rolling around on that. So the, when you play four players, it's two vs. Two versus two. Yeah. So right now, uh, the game is kind of designed as a, a, a true, like, sort of competitive miniatures game style of game. Uh, we think it's pretty accessible. But when you play uh, three or four players, you are playing with teams versus each other. Uh, we're we are working on other future scenarios, and so I would love to introduce like a true three or four player scenario. Um, but with this course set, we want to keep it really simple so that people kind of get acclimated to the system. Yeah, you can introduce more stuff later. Right? I'm sure people are gonna gonna be interested. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have a ton. Of ideas already and uh, the response has been has been great so we are absolutely going to come out with more stuff uh, next year and we'll make more announcements about that later this year um, but we're really super stoked on these six boxes that we have here you know the four packs are 40 bucks the two packs are 25 bucks so we feel that's a really sort of uh, you know good price point also every every single box even the two packs is, is a playable experience on its own so not only is it an expansion but you can also play those games as well and that's really important for us because we know that a lot of people that might not be really hardcore gamers they might be seeing this at target and they really like rick and morty 25 dollars is about what they would expect to pay for a game and so we wanted to give them a, a 25 dollar you know game inside that box um, but if they like it then they could be like well you know i kind of like harry potter and dc and golden girls too let me kind of grab those as well Awesome. And if you just have, you know, one person that you play games with at home, good two-player game as well. Yeah, exactly right. Like, every game can be playable on its own, but, you know, th this set also kind of works as, like, a one-player starter set. So, like any other sort of miniatures game, I can buy the Harry Potter set, go to my friend's house, and he has his, his figures, and we can play against each other. Or, if I'm playing with people who don't have their own figures, they can use mine, and we can play out the box. And the characters. So, each one is unique, specific to whatever that character is in the universe that they're from. Could you tell us maybe some of their abilities or special things? Yeah, sure. So right now we're looking at the Harry Potter characters. So uh, we designed the Harry Potter figures to be, uh, there's primarily more range attacks. Um, they have some kind of trick, tricky abilities and kind of leadership abilities. So like Voldemort has a dark command ability where he can uh, he can give like a Bellatrix an action and she can take an action on his behalf. Um, Hermione and Harry are really good at like teamwork. So Hermione has an ability called Loyal Friend 
where if a character near her is knocked down, they can't be knocked out because she's protecting them. So to, if you want to take out Hermione's friend, you got to go through Hermione first. And so some of those abilities. Uh, but then you look at like the DC comics or like the, those ones, uh, Batman is more of a, a melee character and, and really is good at getting uh, up close and personal. And he gets a better a bonus to defense when he's surrounded by enemies. And so we really tried to capture the flavor of each character in, in the sets. Um, but the sets also feel unique from each other. So if you, if you don't care anything about all these licenses, which I think would be hard to believe, but if you really don't care and you're like, oh, I like, when I play miniatures games, I like getting up close and personal, well, then DC Comics is a great box for you to start with because all those characters have really potent melee attacks. Yeah. Or I like to be a magic user and rain. Here exactly we go, right. Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah, exactly right. And then the Golden Girls, who I want to talk about, okay. are really awesome because when we were designing the Golden Girls, we knew that a lot of people might be like, oh, are they going to be good? It's like, we absolutely made them good. So what we looked at, we looked at what, what other things don't the other sets do well? And for example, we don't really have any hardcore tank type characters. So Rose in the Golden Girls has a power called Thank You For Being A Friend, where she makes one of her allies, gives them a friendship card. If anyone with a friendship card is attacked, Rose gets another action. So it's a way for her to kind of protect her friends where it's like, okay, I'm gonna make Blanche my, my friend and now you don't wanna attack her, you gotta come to Rose and attack her. So we had a lot of fun you know, designing characters or abilities for all the different characters in the game. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. I love how the abilities kind of match the characters from, from that world. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And then uh, where can people learn more about Funko Games and maybe what, what's coming up next or where, where they can get them? Yeah, so if you're interested in this game, uh, it is Funko.com slash Funkoverse is where to go. Uh, it's coming out uh, on October 6th, I believe, uh, and retailers everywhere. Uh -huh. um, but it will be available on pre-order right now. I think you can pre-order it from Target.com, GameStop.com, and Walmart.com. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an FLGS uh, mass market. We're, we're literally trying to put it everywhere. We're trying to make new gamers. And so, yeah. like, for example, like, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be sold in Hot Topic. Like, we're, we're really trying to branch out and make sure that people who, you know, maybe haven't played games in 10 or 15 years will see this somewhere and think about picking them off the shelf. Yeah, that's awesome. Bringing sort of that, the brand that's already, a lot of people already know with the pop figures and, um, bringing board games into it. It's awesome to see building the board game community that way. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, our cameraman wants to know, will you ever do Deadpool character? So uh, at, our, at our studio, we're fans of, of literally everything. And so what it comes down to is if we have the chance to put it in the game, we'll put it in the game. Now, obviously, uh, you know, Funko makes a lot of figures for a lot of different licenses. Those don't always necessarily translate one to one with being able to get the license for the board game. The board, yeah, the board um, game separate. But but believe us, we are working very hard to get everything we love into this game, and uh, you know, never say never. Yep. yep. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. I hope you have a great uh, con here. You guys are so busy showing off the game, which is amazing. Is there any last thing you want to say? Uh, no, I just hope people check it out. Um, you know, like I said, coming to stores near you, um, pick it up from your FLGS or pre-order it now. And uh, yeah, give it a shot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This is Callie from Unfiltered Gamer at Gen Con. And as always, we'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con. I'm Callie, and today I'm with David from Jap Anime Games. Hi, David. Hi, how's it going? It's going great. How about yourself? How's it going at Gen Con? It's good. It's been kind of crazy. Thursday was nuts, and Friday has been even more nuts. I've been hearing really good sales from other, from other booths, like Thursday. I think I think what happened was a lot of people like thought 50th anniversary would be too crowded, so they came this year instead. And it's like everybody still came. Yeah, it's, it's really packed. it's really busy here, and it's tomorrow packed. might even be more. Right? I'm scared about Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome! I see you guys have so much to share. Your booth is hopping. Lots of people demoing games. So. What are you excited to share today? Well, we've got a lot of our new and upcoming games. Uh, right now, I would probably say our, our most important to share is we have Bessem 4th Edition, uh, which is our anime RPG, Big Eyes, Small Mouth. Uh, the 4th Edition is currently on Kickstarter and I believe Thursday, August 8th. I think that's what Thursday is. Maybe it's the night. Um, that's, uh, when that Kickstarter ends, it's a full redo of the entire rules. Uh, 300 pages, or more, more than 300 pages, actually. Um, lots really of content. Art. Yeah, lots and lots of content. And we are working on uh, getting some IPs attached to it so that we can have some, you know, we're talking to anime companies to have their own little expansion for the rules. Um, and we can officially announce that we are working on a Robotech RPG as well. So it's a system that'll work with other other yeah, games. Yeah, this will work with other ones, and then the RPG Robotech, uh, the Robotech RPG will be its own system. 
Awesome. All right, what's next? Uh, so next on the list, we also finally have Love Formula N. Uh, this is a Kickstarter we did a while back, and we are we finished the art, we finished the game. Uh, this is our samples, which literally came in three days ago, <laughs> maybe four days ago, and we had it shipped here. Our production manager literally saw it for the first time here at Gen Con, which is crazy. Um, and we're very excited about it because it's finished and it's good to go. Uh, we've got a couple of minor tweaks we want to make sure because, you know, this is a sample. We want to make sure it works perfect. Yep. Um, and then that's going to go to print. And once it goes to print, it's going to go right to our Kickstarter backers first. And then we're aiming for, for retail release quarter four of this year, maybe quarter one of next year for the expansion. Nice. That's our hopes. And then this is a card drafting game. Yeah, it's a set collection card drafting game. So I would put it in like... People who like Sushi Go, those types of games, yeah. um, will really enjoy this one if they want to add that matchmaking uh, element to the game. I think they'll like it a lot. Awesome. Good to hear. All right, what's next? Next is our Domina Anthology. The Domina Anthology, this is uh, still available as a late pledge on Kickstarter. Um, and it's going to be Argo, Prolia, and Moraris. Um, these are three games that you can purchase individually or you can purchase them as a set with free shipping, which is nice. Um, all three of them are done by the same game designers the same, as well as the same artist, and I think she did an amazing job on it. Um, it's some of my favorite arts from any game we've put out, uh, me personally. Um, Argoat uh, is a worker placement game for three to five players. It's about 30 minutes to an hour long. Um, and it comes with some amazing bits, which I think are in here. Oh, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, so originally the game came with like Carcassonne style meeples, um, as well as uh, some bits that were basically RGB colors, you know, very normal standard colors. And so what we did was for the Kickstarter and for the retail release, we have little Sophie shaped meeples. Oh, They're cute, super with cute. The Yes, and she's even got a little hat on, um, so it matches the game. Um, and then we also did a color scheme that was very similar to the style of the game while also trying as much as we can to be colorblind friendly. Because um, I personally have a lot of colorblind fran fran gamers, and I want to make sure they can play. So. Something very important to keep in mind, making games accessible for everyone. Absolutely. That is important to me. Um, and then along with that, we also have these really awesome uh, tokens. The final version oh, so won't the, have the silver back. come in there. That come in there, and they are... Beautiful. They are really, really nice, high-quality gems. They weigh a ton. That's awesome. Yeah. It's such a little box. And yeah. I guess there's cards, too. Feel these things. They're, they're yeah. going to weight to them. They're really nice. Really and nice. Like I said, that comes in there. Um, so with Argo, you're basically going to be trying to find your path to Eden by collecting different objects. Um, and so you're, you're all working to try and un uncover the truth of, of uh, Eden before everybody else. Um, the next one that we have in the lineup is Prolia. Wait, so is this a similar world or? It is the same, kind of same universe, universe kind of. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're calling them the worlds of mystery sort of thing. Um, they're all the same artists, all the same dinosaur designers. So they're like, they're all kind of in the same world. Um, but you can't but play them together. But they're separate games. Yeah, it's not like Century, we can play them together. But it is kind of that same idea of like games in the same kind of world. Um, so Prolia. I like to equate it to a competitive, almost filler version of like Forbidden Island. So it's got that pressure luck element where the island is sinking into the ocean, um, and your goal is to collect as many artifacts before it sinks into the ocean and before your opponents are able to get to them before you. But if you wait too long and collect too many things and don't get enough money to get a boat, you get sink you sink into the ocean with everybody else. Oh no! Yeah. So, okay. Cool. Pressure and luck. And this looks like a to 30 minutes. shorter game. Yeah, two to five players, 15, 30 minutes. Uh, Moraris, I say for last because it's my personal favorite. So Moraris is a three to six player, I don't want to call it social deduction. It's not like werewolf. It's more like the mind. So where you're trying to think of what other people are thinking, that sort of thing, um, except it's competitive. And what you're going to be doing is you're so going is to be... So is it kind of bluffing, kind of? Not really as much bluffing okay. as trying to think what your opponents are doing yeah. and trying to play according to what they're doing. So there's going to be a row of cards worth victory points, and you're going to be bidding on those cards. But the problem is, if you bid the same as of an opponent, neither of you get those cards. Oh, no. <laughs> Plus, at the end of the game, you're starting it with a character that has its own secret objective and scoring. So it changes things up quite a bit every time you play it. And we've played it in like 10 minutes before, and then you immediately just want to play it again. And it's really, really fun game. This one's my favorite of the three. Awesome. Great to hear. So all three of these are available. Late pledge on Kickstarter right now. Yeah. Late pledge. Awesome. And you can get them for 20 20 or 25 or you can get all three for 60 bucks with free shipping. Oh, nice. And they come in like a sleeve that makes them look like old books. 
kind of cool. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it our looks production so cool on the couch. Okay. Teresa did an awesome job on those. Um, All right, what's next? We also have Core Connection, which we're working on, which they're actually playing right over here. <laughs> and I think they're having a good time. Are you guys having a good time playing? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Fun learning. <laughs> yeah, so this is our mech builder. It's a deck builder pun. It's horrible. Ah, I know, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's a mech builder. So what you're going to be doing is you are going to be uh, building a robot to fight other robots, right? Um, and as you're building the robot, you're adding on different things like, you know, different weapons and stuff like that. Um, there is a discard mechanism in order to pay for things, which is really cool. It reminds me a little bit of like Race for the Galaxy, which is my personal favorite game, which is part of why I'm excited. Um, and then you're going to be fighting random robots that pop up or monsters that pop up that you can then destroy and earn victory points for knocking them out. And it's, and this one is going to be coming later this year, and then we have an expansion coming soon after that. So, so the dice and the boards are The dice included. are like your countdown for like your points and your powers and your abilities, as well as the health of the robot. Nice, cool. D uh, building mech and <laughs> destroying mech. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then last but not least, the other the one that we have coming out is called Onimaru. Onimaru is put up by, that we are co-publishing with Penguin and Panda. Um, and this one is going to have game trays inserts. It did a raising job on uh, uh, Kickstarter, um, and it is a cooperative dice game. So, oh, cooperative! Uh, I like cooperative. Fighting Japanese monsters and everything—it's really cool. Art on it is really awesome. So, are you able to open it up and show? We are. We are. Yeah. I can open this up, give you a little bit of a taste. So, this is one of our demos. So, like, we have all these really awesome uh, monsters that you're going to be fighting okay. and going through, and then your characters. Oh, that's a neat player art, board. That's a little really different. Cool. And that yeah. actually combines with the dice trays. So that goes in there right like that. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's really, I think it was on that side. I haven't actually had a chance to play yet <laughs> because I'm waiting for my turn oh, to demo it. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. it, yeah. So it goes in there like that. You're going to be able to put your cards in here as well as your dice to be able to fight the monsters and everything like that. Um, and it, it's definitely a game worth checking out. I think it's going to be really popular. I'm excited to have it awesome. next and, year. And next year. Next okay. year. I, I'm, I, we're really trying hard for the end of the year, but it's probably going to be quarter one. Okay. And then thank you so much for sharing. If people want to learn more about Jap anime games or see, like, what's coming out when, where should they go? Well, the best place to look, obviously, is on our website to see what we currently have available. However, I definitely recommend joining our Facebook groups that we have on Facebook or our Facebook page because we often post, like, sneak peeks. For example, we might be working on something for the Tanto Cori 10th anniversary, which is this year. Yeah. We might be working on something. Um, we have a maybe a special playmat that we've been floating around that combines all five Tanto Cori's into one mat. Wow. So you can play them all at the same time. And someone told me earlier, it's like, oh, that's the way I always played. I'm like, why? You're crazy. That's amazing. <laughs> that's a lot of content. Yeah, but now this is going to be a custom playmat that you can that shows you which ones to put out where. And that's for the Tanto 10th anniversary. We have some other stuff that we might be working on that maybe you, they might hear about in the fall or in our Facebook group for Tanto. So if you're a big fan, definitely join the Facebook group, it sounds like. Uh, is there anything else you want to share, David? No, those are our big, uh, big th releases for later coming this year. And, of course, we have our new releases. We have a new uh, expansion for Art of Crown. We've got uh, Love Battle High School, which is uh, you're narrating your own harem anime. Um, and then we also have our new Sailor Moon Truth or Bluff game that came out this year as well, as well as Starlight Stage, which I'm kind of calling Anime yeah. Splendor. Um, which was my oh, Splendor was okay. my personal gateway okay. game, so I, yeah. I've got to give props yeah, to that too. game. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> that and Castles of Burgundy. Um, and so, uh, anime, uh, anime Splendor. Uh, Starlight Stage, you are uh, the owner of a talent agency, and so what you're doing is you're taking your uh, talent and you're sending them to events yeah. and concerts to be able to build fame and build them up and make them more popular in the industry, which is really cool. Awesome. One thing I noticed is you guys are really well known for the card drafting type games, and, and you're actually bringing in different kinds of games and elements, which is really exciting yeah. to see. More than deck builders, more than made games. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, for Dave, David, for sharing here at Jap Anime Games at Gen Con. This is Callie Wright with Unfiltered Gamer. Thank you, guys, and see you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con. I'm Callie, and today I'm with 
game designer John Kahn. Hi, John. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Oh, I'm excited to be here. Awesome. And we're at the IDW Games booth where John Kahn is showing off one of his new games. You have so many games in the work. <laughs> Wait, list them all for me, please. So I got four games coming out uh, in the next couple of months. We got Ghostbusters Blackout, Grindhouse, Animalchemists, and then the new third edition of Council of Verona. Awesome, and super excited to share Ghostbusters Blackout today. I had a chance to play this before, so super excited to share it all with you guys. And this game is coming out? It's coming out next month. Awesome. So okay, September. so tell us a little bit about the game, uh, the, the brief overview first. Sure, so the idea is that there has been a power outage in New York City. The ghost containment field has shut down, all the ghosts have escaped, and they are just causing chaos all over New York City. So it's up to, of course, the Ghostbusters to team up, work together, to recapture all the ghosts that have gotten free. So we're going to see a lot of classic ghosts like Slimer, Vigo, uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, but we're also going to have a bunch of new ghosts in there from the IDW comic book series. Awesome. I love how it's it's pretty light, lighthearted game, right? It's pretty quick to play. It is. It's very easy to learn. Um, there's a lot of dice throwing, and it's all teamwork. It's all very cooperative based. So there's a lot of table talk going on. There's a lot of figuring out the best way to uh, stop these ghosts from causing too much chaos at once. What I like about this cooperative game is it is really cooperative. You can like give dice to each other and really work out together and problem solve. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the real big focus here is, you know, we're making a cooperative game and we want to give the players the ability to tell their own Ghostbusters story. Uh, it really feels like you're inside of the Ghostbusters world. So we're throwing these custom dice that have, you know, the, the plasma streams, uh, we've got the traps. Oh yeah, there they are, traps. We've got their PKE, which lets them, uh, you know, in the movies, you are able to use the PKE to find the ghosts. In this game, it lets you purchase special equipment like ecto goggles, globuscopes, even a mega trap. Um, and then you can uh, reassure the people of New York with your no ghost symbol that I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Yeah, so you can uh, reduce chaos that's getting built up throughout the city. And then, of course, you're going to be traveling with the uh, with the ecto one with the car. So yeah, that's. Um, what you're going to be throwing those dice and then you're going to be working your way around the five boroughs of Manhattan and placing those dice directly on ghost cards uh, and so as you're placing them you're going to be taking out those goats and uh, hopefully neutralizing enough threats before the city falls into chaos. Well I love how yeah the, the chaos counter going there and that's really scary because if you get too much chaos that's one way you lose right? Right if you get 20 chaos then you lose the game um, so your goal is to try to catch 15 ghosts. That's the yeah. tracker right and here. There's a, there's a, of course, a trap tracker, um, and that has a track that makes its way along the board. And once you get to 15, you win. Hopefully, uh, before you get to 20 chaos. And there's special abilities for each character and fun stuff. Right. So you, there are eight playable characters. There's the core four that you know from the movies, plus Janine. Uh, and then there's three additional characters from the comics, and every single character has a totally unique ability that kind of changes the way the game is played a little bit. So there's a lot of chances for repeat playing, and coming up with new strategies, finding the way to utilize everybody's unique ability that really fits their personalities as well. Yeah, the replayability with just the characters you choose, and then also the ghosts that come out, and also the uh, different weapons that come out. Right, right, and as you're making your way across the caught track, you're going to get some hiccups occasionally, which are uh, mass hysteria tokens. So if you're doing really well, you may come across a mass hysteria token that, for instance, uh, makes it so all no ghost dice that you roll that round get immediately discarded. So there can be some real big hiccups when you think you're doing maybe a little too well, and all of a sudden you get brought back a little bit from uh, mass hysteria. Awesome. I love it. Anything else you want to share about the game? Uh, it's coming out in September. If you're a big fan of Ghostbusters, it's an obviously must-buy. But even if you're just a casual fan, this is a simple enough game to learn, uh, and it's a good enough game with the family that you know you can really pick it up and play it. It's for one to four players, and it takes about 30 to 45 minutes. Awesome, yeah, especially family, because you can help each other out. It's really good to get other people into gaming. Right, yeah, nobody's going to be left behind with a game like this. It's all about figuring out the best way as a community to uh, take care of these ghosts. As a game designer, what would you say you're most proud of in this game? Well, for me, it was being able to bring in the classic ghosts. You know, I grew up as a huge fan of Ghostbusters. I even have a Ghostbusters tattoo. 
Uh, and so when I was given the material for this game, which was is based on the IDW comic series, the first question I had was, is, are the movies canon in this comic series? And they were. I was allowed to use every single ghost that I wanted to from my childhood. Uh, so that was a really fun thing. And being able to really play with the personalities. Finding the way to make Slimer feel like Slimer as he's coming out on the board. or make, With the special abilities. Right. So, so Slimer, for instance, because he'll go right into Slime, you only one Ghostbuster is allowed to place dice on Slimer as he goes around and causes chaos. So everybody has their own unique personality and their unique flair that really makes them feel like they belong in the Ghostbusters universe. Paul, thank you so much for sharing about Ghostbusters Blackout. If people are interested, where can they go to uh, find out more about it or purchase it eventually? Yeah, so to find out about it, you can just go to IDW's website, um, and it'll be available in stores uh, this September. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing, John, John Con. Do you have uh, anything else you want to share? Uh, just have a great Gen Con. Yeah, you too. <laughs> All right, this is Callie with Unfiltered Gamer at Gen Con. Thank you very much, and see you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con. I'm Callie from Unfiltered Gamer, and I'm here with Rachel Blasky from 524 Lab. Hello, hello. <laughs> and Brian Lewis, game designer. Hello. Awesome. So, uh, looks like the con is super busy. Uh, how's it going so far? It is so busy. I've been non-stop and then I hide and try and like breathe for just a second. <laughs> How about yeah, you? Definitely one of the, this has probably been the best con that I've been to. Yeah. It's been so busy and people have been so nice and just so giving. Mm -hmm. It's just awesome to see the board game community. So many people converge in one place and have mm -hmm. fun. Okay, before we get into it, I have to say, Rachel, your hair. <laughs> So what's it all about? Well, I had to go all out for the purple because any villains purple, I, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> so Mint Cooperative, mm -hmm. which is your new game, yes. has the purple theme. It does. So you're celebrating that. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about Mint Cooperative. So Mint Cooperative is an amazing design from John Gilmore and Brian Lewis. And uh, it's one of the first ones that we kind of stepped away from Justin's designing. And it's been really exciting to see um, just some new stuff that uh, makes gaming even more approachable. Um, because when you're doing a cooperative game, it, there's you lose the competitive aspect that can be off-putting to non-gamers. And it's really cool to be able to bring somebody new into the hobby. Awesome. So this is a co-design mm -hmm. with Brian here and John Gilmore, mm -hmm. very another well-known designer. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about working with him and how you guys co-design. So you know, John's a great guy. I've known him for a few years, and um, we were sitting around one day, and and I think the Kickstarter uh, had just ended for your for years. And I said, "Do you know Justin?" And then he's like, "No." He's like, "Well, let's reach out to him because we're interested in designing in this series." So, and we were coming up with ideas, and we came up with the cooperative idea. An interesting little story is that this originally came out. Our theme was it was called, we called it Mint Attacks, and the little uh, these were flying saucers uh. coming into the city and trying to overtake it. But I do <laughs> like this theme a lot. Um, but it, you know we bounce ideas off each other we say and John's favorite thing to say is well I'm not in love with it which means he hates it but he'll be nice about it <laughs> I mean, it means you gotta you gotta improve it more right, right. get yeah. it to the next level exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, I see one of my favorite villains there ginger Vitus uh, I love the theme how you brought it to life with the different characters tell us a little bit more about maybe how you play or um, and how the game works Sure. So in the game, you can this can play two to four people, and basically what's going to happen on, on a, a, a player's start of the turn, you're going to roll these four dice. These four dice at first are also are going to tell you uh, if there is trouble in the city. Now I've done three fours here, which is not good. Not good. We so call bad. that we call that triple trouble. You're going to reveal three trouble cards, and each trouble card will basically tell you to remove mints from the cards on, and when you remove them. Um, if you're, the number of uh, danger signs that are on that card will increase your panic track. If the panic ever reaches 27, the game immediately ends and you lose. As heroes, you're trying to keep the panic down and restore um, uh, peace and tranquility to the city. And by restoring mints. By right. putting mints, because everyone has to have fresh breath. Right. So when you, on your turn, after you've re already done this, then you have your choice of doing your actions based on the dice rolls. 
So you can choose to do that. People will also have these little stunt cards, and the stunt cards will have numbers if you match them. You can use these in place of these actions. And this is the cooperative aspect where right. you're deciding who's going to do what ability. Exactly, because everyone's everyone will have their own hero card, which has an ability as well, and it only triggers with like a five. So someone might say, I really want to use my ability this turn, so can I please use the five? And someone say, okay, well, I'll do, I'll take this four action. So, and then a unique thing with the six, too, mm -hmm. is you can use use a special ability. Correct. So the specials are on the cards and uh, they change with the different villains. So just depending on which villain you're playing with. Oh, and I will yeah. totally interject that Go we are, I decided that I didn't like special. It didn't make sense. So we're going to actually rename it to be the villain's weakness because that makes way more sense. So if then his, people know where to find it. Exactly. And it's on the back here. Like, so Nick's weakness makes it so that you reduce the regional panic by three. So that's Nick Nick O'Teen. Nick O'Teen. Oh my gosh, the puns. They are so fantastic. I love that that whenever I explain that this is a mint universe, so of course the villains are dental. Everybody just always cracks a smile yep. and we go into the names and it's they're they're hooked. <laughs> it just goes along with the whole universe. I mean the theme theme to it all fits in the little mint tin, mm -hmm. which you can carry around. Just take it anywhere and invite people to play games with you, get more people into the hobby, which is right. super exciting. Yep, and the right. one thing we definitely did when we designed this is we wanted it to be really accessible to beginning gamers. Mm -hmm. So you start with the beginning villain, but if they want a challenge, they can go with the really hard villain, and it will definitely give them a challenge. So right. don't think that just because it's in a small tin that you're not going to get a lot of game out of it. And there, there is a lot of pieces, a lot of game, a lot of little the, the cards in there. Uh, I did yeah. want to show yeah. how to win because yes, that's yes, important. That's stuff, very right? important. Right. So to win, you need to survive mayhem. There's three in there, just like in Pandemic. They have the the, the shuffled in pieces. And uh, if you get through three mayhem, which is when, when you draw a mayhem, you have to count off the total visible panic panic symbols and then take that as a direct hit. It's, it's rough. But it if you can rough. get through three, you win. It's awesome, and there's it. there's ways to reduce the panic with some of the abilities, That's which correct. makes it really fun. And choosing, do I want to reduce the panic or add more mints? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Very fun. All right, when will this game be available? Okay, nine, <laughs> nine, nineteen. I love it because it's the same. I don't care. It's month, day, day, month, where you live in the world. Nine, nine, nineteen. On Kickstarter. On Kickstarter, Correct. awesome. So, and if people want to learn more, where should they sign up to learn more? Mintcooperative.com. Awesome. Perfect. Anything else you guys want to say about the con or about the game? Loving it here. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, Rachel and, uh, <laughs> and Brian, for joining us here at Gen Con. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. <laughs>